everybody. This is the Post Movie Podcast presented by ObsessedWithFilm.com. I'm Steve Head. I'm John Black. And on this week's episode, we're going to do a preview for the Independent Film Festival Boston. And we have a guest with us. We're happy to have Brian Tam, who's the man- managing director of the festival. Hello. Thanks for joining us, Brian. Thanks for having me. And we're going to cover uh, some of the films that we've already seen, and then Brian's going to also recommend some of the stuff that he digs that's coming up for the festival, which runs, what are the dates? Uh, April 27th through May 4th. And it's jam-packed. Yes. And it's kicking off with Being Elmo, the, the Kevin Clash film. Yes. Uh, who, um, th- this I find kind of intriguing, I'll, I'll say right away, because I, I had the opportunity to not work with him, but I got to see him work as Shredder on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 when okay. I was working as a camera assistant. And so this is like... He must have been doing this for 25, 30 years now. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's been doing puppets since he was a kid. That's what the movie's about, about how he got started. And, you know, he's probably one of the last puppeteers, really, to be trained by Jim Henson. Huh. So, have, you, have you seen the film? Yes. What did you think? I loved it. I think it's really... It's really sweet. He's 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 got a great story to tell, and you know, there's just some. He's a very genuine guy. There's not a lot of cynicism there, and I think it's just really sweet. You know, it's a good so. way to kick off the festival too. I it's think just, it's. Re- I mean, I think anyone who grew up watching Henson stuff, watching The Muppet Show or Sesame Street or whatever, or mm-hmm. you know, not even just almost specifically, I think it really strikes a chord in you. It's very nostalgic and it's very. There's like you know a lot of behind the scenes stuff is interesting. I think there's like a lot of aspects to it that's really, really wonderful. I thought it was you know, like a lot of it's actually like very emotional. Like you know when he talks about Jim Henson and you know it's just it's I don't know. I thought it was really delightful. You know what I thought was interesting about him is is the stuff that the puppeteers do when they're not filming. Yeah, it's actually quite. It, it's so it's. It's it's adult actually. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is not humor for kids. Uh, uh, I, I had seen them do takes where they just, you know, it, it was just like personal stuff for the hell of it. Yeah. And so I imagine uh, the movie is. I mean, it's not, probably not a G-rated thing. So. Well, I mean, it's not. I mean, the you know, the, it's not. I don't think there's anything adult in it particularly. I think it but is. Elmo doesn't. Um, there's no. Right, it's not, it's right. not Avenue Q. No, it's not, okay. no, it's totally different. Thing. No, I mean, you know, the, that's what we needed. This is not Avenue Q. The filmmaker uh, recommends it for eight and above. So I mean, it's not like like if you're you've got like a two year old that's really into Elmo, they'll probably be bored by this because there's a lot of you that's know adults I mean. talking, but. You know, it's not, you know, there's no, you know, lewdness in it. There's no right. behind the scenes. Um, by the way, I should say, we don't really have a framework for this show. We're just kind of winging it. Uh, John and I have seen uh, The Future, the Miranda July film. Yeah. Uh, the Trip with Steve Coogan, Troll Hunter. Troll Hunter. Digged it. <laughs> and Bellflower yesterday, go see which Troll was Hunter a trip. Again. I would see Troll Hunter again. So we, you know, we don't really have, uh, Brian's seen a bunch of the films, and I'm eager to hear, we're eager to hear what he has to say about them, but uh, there's really no... Well, before before we even get started into the the interviews, I, I really want to encourage people to to go to this festival. And I just want Brian, if you have any kind of tips, if it's your first festival, what would be a good thing for people to not like it's your first like if I was new to town or you know I had festival phobia or something like that where I was don't sure. have festival phobia right that's just it you know these we were talking before but they're um, part of the reasons a big part of the reason this festival is is so cool is that you've got this volunteer army yes who are everywhere in the Those in a t-shirt too, and they're, they're proud yeah you know well I was just saying uh, any any question you have whether it's what theater do I go to how long is the movie what's this about and they'll either answer you or get you the right answer or they're just so friendly and open and helpful um, yeah I mean I think our festival is the volunteers that's that's all there is to it I think we've got like um, you know on the staff we've got you know uh, Tanya and Dan who run the volunteers and you know we go through meetings and you know we get everybody up to speed so that everybody knows you know what kind of information to give out I think you know the other great thing is that we have about 200 volunteers and probably about 80% of them are returning volunteers huh. so we just have people who come back year after year and get really into it I mean we're really a festival dedicated to the community I mean we're all local we all live in Somerville you know the volunteers are all local like everybody really cares about you know we're in independent the theaters, the Somerville, the Brattle, the Coolidge, you know, places that people feel really connected to. And I mm-hmm. think it's not, 
we don't fly people in from all over to run the festival. They're all local people, and they feel really psyched to be here. So, yes, if you see somebody with, like, a green shirt that says crew on the back, ask them what to do, and they'll help you. Yeah, yeah, and then and you just get um, – one of the things I love to do is I just pick up a program, and they've got great – uh, brief descriptions on here of what each movie's about and just take a chance because it's uh, I remember going one year and just because a movie ended and no screening was beginning and I didn't know what it was and just walking in and it was shorts it was the festival yeah. shorts you know, there's always great surprises shorts short films are you know? just so cool and you've got several programs I think is it five yes different uh, programs of shorts and that's just it if they have either two, five however many films are there if one's not to your liking, there's another one right behind yeah, it. Like last year, you loved War Danda. I yeah. Mean, do you have any expectation for that? No. I mean, it's like, you know. I mean, I think to me that's a great thing about a festival, any festival, not just ours, but is the element of surprise. It's the thing that, like, oh, you know, I read a line or two or the picture looks interesting. Just give it a mm -hmm. shot. I mean, those are the movies, I think, that stick with you. And I think, you know... Especially if you see any amount of movies at all, like you see, you know, you've seen the trailer. By the time you actually get to the, see the movie in the theater, you feel like you know about it. But here, you, you really discover a film, and I think it stays with you more. You like, you feel like a part of it. Yeah, and you won't. There's no guarantee that these some of these movies will ever end up in theaters. The shorts aren't usually don't go to theaters. Yeah, uh, no. There's a lot of the features even that aren't going to have the backing or the whatever it is to get into the commons. You know, so you get to see something you may not. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely. There's definitely films here that they'll absolutely play at the Kendall, they'll absolutely play at the Coolidge, but there are films that are going to be self-distributed, so maybe they'll be on DVD. But not only is this like a great way to see the film beforehand, a lot of these films do have filmmakers coming, so right. it's a great way to kind of, especially those films that you really connect to, you get to hang out with a filmmaker, and you know, we're definitely not a festival where you know, there's like this huge divide between the filmmakers. You know, they, they came here to meet the audience, and you know, every year we hear from filmmakers about how much they love the boss and Audience, they feel they're really perceptive, and you know, so they really they came here to talk to you. So if you want to talk to somebody about, you know, you go down to Red Bones, and you know, kind of we hear all the time about people who made connections with filmmakers who are like, well, I'm kind of friends with this guy now because I love this film, and we got a beer, and that led to you know dinner, and you know now we you know yeah, stay in touch. You know? That's that sense of community you were talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. because you you go see you know um, is the director for Troll Hunter coming in? Uh, I, I don't recall. I don't he should. <laughs> anyway, think, uh, any of these films, you go see it, and then there's a Q&A. Yeah, yeah. But afterwards, you'll see them at Red Bones. You'll see them at uh, Joshua Tree. You'll see yeah, them yeah. In the at the coffee shop next door, Absolutely. hanging out in the lobby. And they're so approachable, and just it carries over. It spills yeah. over into the neighborhood. Like you said, it's such a community thing. Yeah. Um, Do you have any returning filmmakers? Um, yes. Um, I should have brought my list. Uh, so we've got... Um, Todd Rohal, who directed um, Guatemalan Handshake a few years ago, is back with um, Catechism Cataclysm. <laughs> oh, Stevie. Stevie from Eastbound and Down. Yes. Oh, is it? Um, yeah. Okay. Stevie Janowski. Uh, we've got uh, Michael Tully, who directed the Silver Juice documentary oh, yeah. and Cocaine Angel. Yeah. He's back with Septian. Um, Marenge July is, we've, we closed in 2005 with me and you and everyone we know. She's actually going to be here this year. She was at Ebert Fest last time. But uh, this year we've got her, so we're very excited. She's going to be here with the future. That ought to be a draw. I mean, I think... She I know of a number of people that are huge fans of yeah. hers and, you know, the opportunities well, she's film and I mean, she operates in so many mediums. She's written a book. She does her art, obviously. So I think we're really excited to have her to kind of talk about her, you know, various projects. And it's a really interesting movie. Yes. You know, I, I, have, love, I love surrealism. I know how it it's falls flat you know, some people, wanna, but, you know. Yeah, we'll just say it's really interesting. You should go, because he's not talking about it. It's like, oh, you're taking the magic out. Yes. You should definitely go to yeah. that one. Well, any movie that has the the idea of a T-shirt that crawls back to you, <laughs> representing something like your old life coming back to get you, well, that's cool. <laughs> if that I'll, happens to me, with me, it's just dirty laundry that's really had enough. <laughs> John, we got to get the Troll Hunter. <laughs> well, save the best. All right, Troll Hunter. Um, I just, it had me at the name. Uh, 
<laughs> even though, below. yeah, I walk, I walk in and um, I think it was a Liv thing. You know, she's uh, the subtitles. I look, I don't care. It's trolls. They just better be trolls in this movie, and they're all, <laughs> and they're awesome. Well, it's supposed to, it's supposedly this uh, documentary team that's investigating these deaths of these bears, yeah. and they're brought to the attention of a fella who turns out to be a secret government operative assigned to hunting trolls or maintaining the troll population or in some way containing trolls. <laughs> and slowly you get to see these things revealed and you learn, like, the troll rules. You yeah. know, how to kill a troll, you know, what are their uh, Achilles heels. What are they and, uh, What are their likes and dislikes? Likes and dislikes. The different types of trolls, the yep. different sizes of trolls. And then when they appear on the screen, it's just so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like in a way, it was like a comedic Blair Witch. I mean, it, yeah. in a way, it's like a comedy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I just like I mean, the idea, you know, they... The way comedic I, Blair Witch, so. I was actually a little sick of movies saying, you know, we found 3,000 hours of footage, and, you know, we cut it down to this documentary. Everything you see is true. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> But I mean, all that digital now. stuff is true? Yeah, okay. digital stuff. It's just but you know, after seeing this movie, we had this feeling like this is really going to play with the Independent Fest audience. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a fun movie to watch with a crowd, although we didn't see it with a crowd, but definitely a fun movie. Yeah, that's definitely a hot take that a lot of people are, you know, I think Troll, as you said, I think the name, people are like, all right, I'm seeing, I don't know what it's about, but I'm seeing that. Do you guys get, like, lots of pre-sales? I mean, can stuff sell out, you know, even before, or is it um, definitely we, we get a lot of pre-sales, like, but I mean, I, I feel like on the whole, you know, if you show up on the day, you'll get tickets. I mean, a lot of the stuff that sells out, sells out, you know, at times. So, I mean, I definitely think it's worth, you know, if, you know, I mean, I think it's great to buy tickets ahead of time. But, you know, if you feel like you're not totally committed yet, you know, you can definitely pick up tickets stay up for pretty much everything. Yeah, especially when you go to the, uh, it goes back to what we are saying, but you go to the Somerville, let's say you want to see, you know, whatever movie it is, there's four other theaters there, yeah. you know, and chances are there's something else playing. So, you know, if, if for some reason something sold out or whatever, just pick another one. I mean, I would definitely say, you know, like, you know, Saturday afternoon, evening, Sunday afternoon and evening, they start selling out early. So, I mean, it's definitely a good idea. And I can also say probably Conan O'Brien, the closing night, is going to sell out yeah. um, pretty soon, um, maybe by the time you hear this. Um, <laughs> but definitely, you know, maybe you come to the Somerville and just kind of see what you feel like and get a ticket and just enjoy it. Yeah. You know, when I was looking at the uh, at the program, something I've never really taken advantage of before are the panels. Yes. And is that something Good anyone point. who's going can take part in these panels? Yeah, panels are work? free to everybody. Um, they're uh, funded by uh, the uh, Left Foundation, so they're totally open to the public. And, um, yeah, you just show up. Uh, we've got um, two of them are going to be at the Somerville mm -hmm. Theater um, on the weekend, and it's uh, one of them is about navigating the film festival circuit. So that's really mainly aimed at um, filmmakers trying to figure out, you know, what's going on, some... Um, some programmers from some great film festivals like Sarasota and River Run and Rooftop are going to be there. Um, and then we have a, another great one on Sunday about uh, when does a story become a film, and it's sort of about, you know, it's mostly about documentaries and trying to figure out, you know, okay, I've got all this footage. Is this, you know, when does this actually turn into something that people want to go see? And then uh, Friday we have a uh, one I'm really looking forward to called Docs That Rock. Uh, that looks cool. Yeah, every year we have um, a lot of rock docs that always do well. This year we've got stuff about the replacements, uh, Morphine, and uh, the Tigra. La Tigra, and Pentagram, of course. And so a bunch of those filmmakers are going to be at Mass Art talking with um, Brad Searles from Bradley's Almanac mm -hmm. um, huh. about, you know, what's it about, you know, how does it go from, you know, I don't know, like just like concert footage to like an actual story. Right. So, Right. It's such a key part of what festivals are all about. Yes, if you get your movie in, it, it gets seen by people. Yeah, but yeah. how do you make that leap? How do you get it? You know, yes, I can read the submission guidelines and send it off, but what, how do you make the product good enough to get someone's attention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, and, and all these people. Now, are these people who are in the festival this year? Or? Um, yes, all the. Um, 
color me obsessed is the uh, that's the replacement, replacement stock. Yeah, I mean that's how we put the panels together to get the filmmakers in, and then we kind of figure out you know what kind of themes are sort of emerging from that, and like what would be good for them to talk about. Um, and I think they're good for you know whether you're a film student or just you love movies or there's maybe a particular if you're a replacements fan, you may want to know like how what made you make this kind of film about the replacements. Yeah, and they're yeah, you know, and they definitely the they talk to each other, but then it's also open to the public for questions. So mm, it's yeah. again, it's one of those, it's that reach out to the community kind yeah. of thing that this festival is so good yeah, at. Yeah. Septien, um, Michael uh, Tully, Michael Tully's yeah, yeah. film did really well at Sundance. Yes, so I'm eager to see that one. Yeah, uh, he's yeah he's great. We've had a couple of his films before, and so we're really we love having him. He loves Red Bones. <laughs> <laughs> the one John and I are looking for. Forward to uh, 13 Assassins. Yes. The new Mickey film. Not seen it. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like, uh, it's like Seven Samurai, but with, with gore. It's different. <laughs> like, I mean, Mickey is a guy who's probably made like 80 films since we've just been sitting here. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so it is a little bit more classic in the sense of it's, it's definitely a more traditional samurai film, mm -hmm. but there are those moments that are clearly, okay, that's Mickey. Like, you know, no one. No one gets beheaded like people in a Mike film. This looks like his largest production, budget-wise. Um, probably. I mean, it's he usually uh, shoots pretty low budget, but this yeah. is full-on period piece. There's horses and everything, so. Wow. Yeah. It's uh, Sunday, May 1st at the Brattle. Yes. Uh, Bellflower, which John and I saw yesterday, was a trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, it, it was. was totally not what I expected. You know, I loved all the road warrior stuff, but this truly was a relationship gone disastrously awry just by, like, a couple of, like, one bad decision, <laughs> you know? Like, she knew she was going to hurt this guy, but damn. But the know? great thing about it is um, that it's called Bellflower because of the street they live on, but there's the Medusa. The Medusa. Which is this uh, muscle car they build or modify. Uh, these two guys modify in the movie, and it's a making a guest spot. Yes, the <laughs> Medusa is coming to Davis Square. Uh, so in all of its... Um, Flame throwing glory. Yeah. Are you guys going to be able to put it into the triangle park there? I'm not sure exactly where it's going to be. Yeah, I think up? it's going to be in front of the theater. And then, so after the film, like the whole audience will be invited to come out and take a look and see it fired up. So I think oh, it's going to be really exciting. I think, especially, you know, in the evening, I think when it gets dark. Oh, those it, flames? It cuts a very impressive figure. Yeah. Uh, director Evan Gladell is coming? Yes. I, evidently, yeah, there's, uh, when I was talking to the studio, Bridget, the other yeah, night. Um, yeah, she, he's coming in. Okay. The two guys are coming in. The cameraman's coming in. Yeah, the it whole crew's coming. It keeps yeah. building more and more, which is really exciting. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's kind of fun for us as, as when we interview these people because at first you're like, oh, we're going to talk to the director. Oh, we're talking to the cast. And would you mind talking to the cinematographer? Well, no the problem. Film is aesthetically interesting in, in that they actually have dirt on the lens. I mean, and I got to thinking, there was a time when, you know, when Easy Rider was huge. A lens flare was, like, the, one of the things you just don't do. You know, it's like, you don't do it. You, the lens flare was not art. But, you know, we think of Easy Rider, we think of, you know, the lens flares. You know, that kind of early 70s, late 60s stuff. With this, he actually had dirt yeah. on the lens. Even even as they were cutting in between shots, the, the same dirt would appear in the same spot. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm assuming that's an aesthetic choice, you know, about the type of... It could be aesthetic, it could be making. budget. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it didn't yeah. look accidental. But that's a real really DIY film. Like, they built, you know, Medusa, as you said, they built a lot of the rigs for the cameras. Like, they really put this film together by hand. So yeah. I think that's, you know... And that's a great thing. You, you can go talk to them afterwards and say, like, well, why did you make this choice? Why did you make that choice? You know, what's behind the car? Like, what, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, it looks like a very, um, you know, after the screening, people were using the word mumblecore again. I don't totally agree with it. It had that element. But it was just a real visceral destroyer of film. Yeah. You know, super violent. Yeah. You know? I love it. I shouldn't, it, towards the end, you know, super violent. But and surreal. 
Yeah, but, but then the great thing about it is, is, is you're so wrapped up emotionally, you're so invested in these characters that when the violence happens, it's that much more powerful, which yeah. is a sign of good filmmaking. It's not just splattering guts against the wall. You cared about these people as they got hurt. Yeah, it, this also looked like another film that really would have played to the Austin crowd, as I imagine it. It did. It did. You mentioned, Brian, there were some movies you wanted to give a shout-out to. Was it Submarine? Um, yeah, uh, Submarine I'm a big fan of. I think, you know, they describe it as the Welsh Rushmore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard of it. I'm curious. Yeah, it's a Weinstein film. Um, it's going to be coming out later on the year, so I think it's going to be one of those. This is one of those great festival opportunities to see a movie before everyone else, so that when everyone else hears about it, you get to say, "Oh, I saw that back at the festival." So it's a little bit. It's a bragging rights film. And you um, know, you know, people. I love that bragging right. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think that's you know, like there, there's something about seeing a film that with a filmmaker there's something about seeing a film that's you know never going to be shown on screen again mm -hmm. but there's also something showing like you know 500 Days of Summer Osiris to be like yeah we saw that whatever yeah, yeah. you know it's a great oh, that's right. to, uh, and we all know from yeah. experience sometimes even though this is a wine scene and we think it's going to hit theaters it may not for whatever reason you know so if you see it now and, and it's so much better to see uh, with an audience I think it's always best to see a movie with a film festival audience. I mean, I think what maybe people who aren't familiar with film festivals don't understand, it's not just going to see a movie and you're done the way that you would normally at the Kendall or, you know, the Common. It's really an event. There's, like, a buzz. And, you know, I, I usually, I mean, I don't know about you guys, I usually don't talk to people in line at, at just going to see a movie theater. Right. But when you're at a festival, everyone's, like, looking at the program, like, what have you heard? What have you seen? What's good? There you is know? something communal yeah. about yeah. connecting. I think, and that's part of, like, the excitement of it. It's, like, you know, you're coming, you're not, you know, you're coming out of your house and kind of getting together with people like you, not like you, kind of discovering things and, you know, like, oh, I saw this documentary, it really changed the way I thought Yeah, about you'll it. actually get a recommendation to see something you didn't think you'd yeah. want to see just because you're talking to somebody yeah, yeah. online. And happens. we know from experience, you yeah. see the same people at the screenings a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, they were at the documentary this morning, now I saw them at the... You know, uh, the shorts this afternoon or whatever. Yeah, and, and or you know, like, oh, you know, I'm really gonna go see this film. Like, oh, I, that, that, I didn't even know about that. But you know, I, you know, you and I, we like the same films. I've seen you around, so I'm gone. Yeah. Um. And hey, why don't we go for a drink across? Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, Ryan, you. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, no, I mean, we, you know, we have a lot of people. Met. We have a. Uh, speaking, going back to volunteers, we have a couple volunteers who met at the festival, and uh, last year got married. No way. And so you know, I think like, you know, it's a wow. great way. I'm not saying you're gonna get married from this. Right, I want right. to disclaim that, but I mean, you definitely, it's a great way to meet people in the way, it's sort of like, you know, it's like social networking in the real world. They must which have is, a great which, film collection. But yeah, <laughs> but it is social networking in the real world, which is such an odd comment that people only depend on social networking. Yeah. These are actual people you're going to see and talk to and, and, uh, and obviously because you're in the same, you're at a festival, you have the same sort of interest yeah, yeah. in film in general, so. I think it's great. You got page one inside the New York Times. Yes, we do. That looks really interesting. Um, yeah. A journalist I, Yeah, I haven't <laughs> yeah. seen it, but I mean, it was definitely one of the hot films at Sundance. It's, you know, getting a lot of, uh, you know, raises a lot of those questions. Um, you know, what is the future of journalism? So, I uh, don't know. We'll see. You're going to pass out Kleenex, so I, I'll be crying at the end of it. Know. I know. Talk. <laughs> it's going to be hard for the press corps. Superheroes looks interesting, too. Is this, uh, this is a documentary about people who choose to dress up yes. as superheroes yes. and put themselves at risk. Yeah, real life superheroes is kind of like a hot topic. There was Kick Ass last year, there was Super, which we just had a screening for, but this yeah. is actually people who go out and, and do it. So. You know, it's, I'm there. I don't know, I don't know the, if it's for everybody. I remember there was uh, there was a documentary a while ago about the people who dress up as superheroes outside of the Chinese theater. And, yes, yes. Oh right, and, right. Know, the Morgan Confessions of uh, Superman. Yeah, yeah. They, and they just you know post their pictures of Superman or Batman or whatever. And then um, I just watched the DVD of Stan Lee's real life superhero TV show. Which was yeah. So terrible. Yeah. So uh, Stan Lee's in this too. I don't know what. No Stan way. Lee, Stan Lee won't say no to anything. <laughs> but you know, if you got a movie called Superheroes, he's in there. Um, oh also, uh, another movie I want to kind of talk about is this movie called Oliver Sherman. Um, it's kind of a small oh. film. It's a Canadian film. It stars um, Molly Parker and Donalogue and Gary. 
Eric Delahunt, who will be here. Um, he's in that um, uh, that show, Raising Hope, but he was also in Deadwood. He's had small parts in, you know, Winter's Bone. So he's just an amazing, amazing actor. We're really excited to have him. And he plays a, um, a war vet who's kind of struggling with what happened over there. And he comes to meet his buddy and, you know, who's kind of moved on. And it's raised a lot of questions about, you know, like how long do you owe somebody for something? You know, if you save somebody's life in a war situation, are you responsible for them from then on? It's really powerful acting. Hmm. Um, and Garrett Dillahunt will be there, which I can't say enough about. Last year we had John Hawks, so oh, yeah. we're, we're getting our uh, Deadwood collection. <laughs> wow. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I'm, I'm very interested in seeing that. Did you see Trigger? Yes. And? I like it a lot. I mean, it's uh, it's another film with Molly Parker, another right. Canadian film. It's uh, Tracy Wright's uh, last film, unfortunately. She was... Um, the art, uh, the art gallery owner, and me and you and everyone we know, and she was in Monkey Warfare, which is you know, maybe one of my favorite films we've ever played. Um, it's interesting. I, I guess the closest thing I could compare it to is like you know before sunrise, before sunset. You know, there's a lot of right. walking and talking. It's a two-hander. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, they they were in a band um, called. Uh, they play people who are in a band called Trigger, you know, maybe around the era of you know Valley, just the post grunge kind of thing, and they've drifted apart. And it's one night, kind of them getting back together and huh. kind of working a few things. It's great, great performances. There's um, cameos from Don McKellar. There's cameos from um, uh, Sarah Polly. You know, it's a very, it's it's a it's a really great film. And that is the Canadian contingent. It's very, it's very Canadian. Daniel McIver wrote it. Bruce McDonald, who did Pontypool and. Um, right. Uh, Hardcore Logo um, directed it. It's incredibly Canadian, but it's really, really good. Great performances. I highly recommend it. Canadian not being a knock. (laughs) No, no. No, it's the good kind of Canadian. Yeah. But again, you know, his his son. They raise their voice at each other. It's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> just just talking to you about it, reading this, I'd be like, eh, two hander, people talking. But that's why I like a festival because when I'm when I'm reviewing stuff, you kind of have to go see it. That's why I would just be like that one and give yeah, it a shot. And I think you know that's a, I mean, Tracy Wright uh, was just a great actress, and I think it's just you know it's yet another example like Monkey Warfare and Me and You and Everyone We Know, where you know director and a writer said we're going to write a role for her like. Mm-hmm. That's what a strong actress she is. That she's usually in smaller roles, but you know, there's people who see, you know, like you know, you look at Tom McCarthy who did like Win Win in the Station Agent. Somebody who's like this person who's always doing character roles can be so much more than this, and right. just breaks them open into new light. So I think that's always exciting to see, just a great performance. Man, the trip was hysterical. <laughs> the trip. It's screen the 29th. Yeah. Yes. April 29th at the Somerville. Again, it's. Too Two guys talking, right? That's all it is, right? Yes. They're, no, they're, no. They're, <laughs> but they're TV personalities being food critics or something. And, yeah. Uh, but it's compete, TV. competing for the quality of their impression uh, over the quality of their uh, impressions. Yeah, I think that who does a better Michael Caine has kind of gotten a lot of play on YouTube. So yeah. I mean, they, but there's so much more they do. There's the, the way they constantly try to outdo each other. Like who can do a better Woody Allen? Who can do you know a better James Bond? I think. <laughs> And it's Steve Coogan and Rob, Rob Brydon. Brydon. Oh, and the and the variances of the James Bond impressions. Yeah. Oh, Roger very, Moore. The Michael Caine. Is he, they do his whole career. Yeah, this yeah, is, this is young Michael Caine. This is old Michael Caine. Um, yeah, they were in a movie together, uh, also by Michael Winterbottom, called Tristan Shandy, a cock and bull story. It's maybe about ten years old. Yeah. And it's sort of like that. It's kind of like Curb Your Enthusiasm because they play sort of themselves, like kind of really bastard versions of themselves. Um, In a way, as it goes on, you start to realize why the other guy thinks the other guy is annoying. Yeah. Because they're so, like, egotistical and insistent. Right. But that's the thing. And it's it's, it's interesting, too, to see as an American, because obviously it's a British piece. In Britain, I think Rob Brydon is maybe a little bit more famous because he's on TV more. And so there's this tension because, you know... Was he in, in the loop? Steve Coogan. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Right. So Steve Coogan is constantly, you know, like, oh, uh, like, he's a little bit more famous than me and it's killing me. But in America, like, I don't think anyone knows who Rob Brydon is. So I think right. people are coming here because it's the Steve Coogan movie. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a scene in the movie where they're trying to get into a uh, historical yeah, yeah, yeah. attraction, and Coogan can't get the woman to let him in. And the other guy just goes up and kind of charms her and does his silly voice from TV, yeah, yeah. and they get in, and it pisses Coogan oh, yeah, off. Yeah. And the thing is, 
you know, even though this movie has great funny moments and, and I love the conversation, there's real heart to it. Yeah. I mean, you walk out feeling for these guys, you know? The ending is, I had no idea it was the yeah, ending yeah. the way it was. I was like, wow. But I think it's, you know, it's like these two guys who are kind of sniping each other a little bit, but there's a real relationship between them. And I think, you know, anyone who's been in a long-term relationship can relate to that feeling of, like, you know, you really care about somebody, but they also really drive you crazy at the yeah. same time. Yeah. That's yeah. both sweet and hysterical. And the does, explanation of his Lamb Neeson impression. Okay. <laughs> and who does a Lamb Neeson impression? And just the way uh, Ed, Bottom does such a great job with it because he just lets it unfold. It doesn't yeah. have any um, road time saying, this is how they feel now or anything yeah. like that. Just let these guys talk. And then they go eat. And really, that's really what fancy it is. Really food it's and yeah. just talk. Yeah. yeah. Really insane food, too. I mean, it's just like Art Deco arrives on yeah, the yeah, plate. Yeah. And they're like, the guy always orders his scholars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I mean, like, related to that, we've got uh, Monday night, uh, this documentary called Al Bui, which is um, the Fran hmm. Adria, the father of molecular gastronomy. And uh, oh, yeah. his famous restaurant that's going to be closing, so everybody's writing about Anthony Bourdain is going to be there and everything. So um, that's if you're into food, I think the trip in Elbu are your best choices to see fine high end food made. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen his. I've seen him on I'm No Reservation yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that where. And what he does to food is amazing. Yeah, and he basically shuts his restaurant down for six months and then comes up with a whole brand-new menu. And he was one of the first people to kind of put science into it and use um, liquid nitrogen. Right. And, you know, he'll have a thing that tastes like a hot dog, but it looks like, you know, a strawberry or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. And so he does these amazing things. And just you see the insane work that goes into it. They're in this laboratory. They're chemists, basically. And they're, like, trying to get different flavors out of a mushroom. They're like, okay, well, what if we steam this one and then infuse it with this and what if we do okay let's try that okay well let's do that you know it's really but then what comes out of it is this beautiful delicious expensive food so this is maybe the last time to see behind the scenes of this restaurant before it closes for good so cool. we've also got the uh, the skateboarding biopic Dragon Slayer yes what did you think of that oh it's amazing it's uh it's it's kind of hard to explain. It's it's really beautiful. It's it's basically this guy trying to get his life back together. He's trying to get back into skating. He's trying to kind of negotiate his life. But it's it's told in these little vignettes that, I mean, the, the thing that reminded me most, I guess, is Gus Van Sant's Paranoid Park. Like, it doesn't even feel like a documentary. Like, it's just so intimate and so beautiful. I can't say enough about it. Like, I don't, it's hard to describe but Like, once you experience it, it's totally mesmerizing. Huh. When you guys are finalizing films for the festival, does it get pretty, like, tight and problematic? Like, certain things, you know, you're, you're really close about including and, um, I mean, are feelings hurt? Is it that... Kind of like uh, nice drawn. Drawn. Yeah, I mean, I think filmmakers, filmmakers' feelings are clearly hurt. We do get a fair amount of angry emails every year. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, we only have a limited amount of slots, and, you know, we get, I don't know, like 1,200-something submissions. Bridges will be burned. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's, some, there's some people who, you know, have some things to say about that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously you can't play every film you like, and sometimes, you know, there's some films you want to do, but there's timing issues, or there's some films you want to do but you know there's a film that's kind of similar like you know we're showing windfall it's just about wind farming and then you know a couple weeks later after we'd accepted yeah, someone's like, like hey yeah. do you want to look at my wind farm doc like yeah we'd like to but you know it's just not right so yeah i mean there's i mean there's definitely even among the staff there's like you know films that we all kind of champion but at the end of the day you know adam rothman the program director has the final say so yeah you know, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. But, yeah, but, I mean, I think, you know, you can't show everything. So yeah. you just show as much great stuff as you can and, you know. Um, do we need to talk about this one? Yeah, let's do the shorts. Tatooine. Tatooine. Yeah, Tatooine. 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 Uh, Tatooine. Which I have not seen, but I'm very much looking forward to. It wouldn't to be an episode. If considering we my Star background Wars with Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> yeah, Tatooine, it's amazing. Um, this this guy does amazing things with cut paper. Like, he basically tells the whole Star Wars trilogy with cut paper, which is amazing enough. But it's set to this really heartbreaking song about, you know, you know, growing up. And I don't want to give too much away about, right. about it, but it's just like this beautiful song. And it's a beautiful animation. 
Um, how do you guys set up your shorts? You you, you, you do themes or, or, or similar uh, styles? Um, we try. I mean, you know, like if you can, obviously, sometimes it depends. I mean, sometimes you've got, you know, three movies that are thematic and you've got three more that aren't, but they're just good. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's a bunch of factors. I mean, you try to kind of get a rhythm going. I find, you know, when you watch a shorts package, you know, like each film has its own, you know, like beginning, middle, and end. So, like, trying to kind of balance that wave with the wave of the whole package is tricky, but, you know, we try our best. We've got three narrative packages and two documentary packages. And for my money, I think, I mean, just personally, I would say, you know, like your average documentary is better than your average narrative film anyways. Right, right. Um, and short docs are just so amazing. There's so many great stories out there. I think documentaries are things we have the hardest time with because they're just so many great documentaries and I mean fortunately there's a lot of other you know organizations in town like the dockyard that can play documentaries but I mean this is definitely Cambridge is you know the hub of documentary filmmaking so we get such great stuff so I think you know if you're looking to just throw the dice and take a risk I think one of the short doc packages you it's cannot always, go wrong you know it's so I, when I've done that it's always worked out yeah. there's always like one or two short documentaries that blow you away yeah well you and, know, um, so few documentaries make it into theaters yes um, and to me it's like I all right the replacements is kind of a given you want sure. to see that documentary but um, just going through you know like you said Dragon Slayer yeah. skateboarding I know nothing about skateboarding yeah. but I'll go yeah um, and but I mean means. again that's not like a skateboarding movie it's about it's about a person and his story right. like Last Days Here which is about the guy who started Pentagram which is a very influential heavy metal band it's not really about the music it's about this guy's struggle with you know addiction and trying to kind of come back mm-hmm. to you know make music again is it good? Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's the cure for pain. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, I think, like, that's the thing is, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of these films, they're about people. You know, The City Dark, which is about, you know, the the fact that well, there's almost no night sky anymore just because there's so much man-made light. Just there's so many, like, beautiful stories out there. I think it's just the documentaries are just really really incredible and they're most document because of just the nature of documentaries they take so long to make they yeah. they, they have to be in the subject's world for so yeah. long there's passion there yeah, yeah. it's not like oh we're going to make a comedy and it's about two people falling in love yeah, yeah. they can be good or bad but these people even if it's a subject you're not a- aware of or care about yeah. there's such passion in the filmmaking usually that it sweeps you up yeah and just you know? the, the mechanics of it like you don't know, you're going and making a movie and you don't know what's going to happen. Right. You know, it's such a leap of faith that they make and, you know, the the moments that they catch, they're like, wow, what if, what if that day they just couldn't make it to talk to him? And there's it, no reshoots. Yeah. There's no script. Yeah. And it's just, you know, the, I think maybe that's one of the reasons why they just hold up better just because there is that passion of, you know, I, I don't know what I'm going to get out of this, but i got to tell the story, whatever it turns out to be. Was it last year you had Lemmy? Yes. Yeah. Man, awesome. Yes. <laughs> you know what ought to have a lot of good local interest is uh, the Mark Salmon story, yes. Cure for Pain. Yeah. Yes. Morphine. Um, that should get a good turnout. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I haven't seen that one yet, but um, the trailer looks great, and the filmmakers are awesome, and, you know, I know members of the band like Dana Collier are behind it, so good. I feel really... You know, good that this is going to be a documentary that people can get behind, and you know, obviously he had a huge following here, and you know, but and again, that's not just you know, it's not just a behind the music kind of thing. Like it's really right. talking about the man and his life and his family and stuff. So I think, you know, it's not it's not just the glossy surface. You spend time with him, and I think the Lemmy doc was sort of similar. Is that exactly you spend time with him and you really feel like you get to know him a little bit. And even if, especially like I knew nothing about the guy, I just knew the music. Yeah, yeah. And it was both exciting, like when he's in rehearsal and playing on stage and stuff, but when he's just sitting alone at a bar, yeah. you know, you kind of like, Lemmy, yeah, sitting yeah. alone at a bar? And this is where you can just find him? Yeah, yeah. I have to wonder if they post some of the stuff in that documentary. Know. No, from Lemmy, what I hear. Lemmy like, in the tank, you know, like photo photo up. Well, I'm sure there's or... some, you know, but at the same time, he probably showed him, oh, i got a tank. Don't shoot okay, that, yeah. you know? Uh, have you seen Fanny, Annie, and Danny? And I, I wanted to mention that not just because it's fun to say. <laughs> yeah. I have not seen Fanny, Annie, and Danny, but Adam raves about it. So okay. I think that's that's definitely 
any uh, one to look for. Um, Convento is a great one uh, to look for. That's about this family of artists uh, who they're in this uh, old monastery in Portugal, and um, one of them create. He takes what? Yes. He takes. <laughs> he takes. Um, I'm just reading the. I'm just reading the blurb. Yeah, he take. He basically takes um, uh, dead animals and turns them into robots. Oh yeah, that's right. Pictures around them, and it's just it's creepy. <laughs> it is, but it's it's also incredibly beautiful. It's just a great. It's another. Oh my god. Great story. You might have to extend this so I can see more of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a good film closing the festival, I must say. We do. We have a great film that'd closing the festival. Big, uh, yeah, speaking of documentaries, draw. this is the first year that we've opened and close with a documentary. Um, yeah, the Conan O'Brien Can't Stop is uh, its by uh, Robin Flander, who's um, just had access to Conan and followed him like in the time between him getting uh, uh, booted from TV and deciding to do this national tour of like actually going out and meeting people and mm -hmm. follows him on tour and the Conan O'Brien that emerges is that you know he's incredibly generous but he's also incredibly demanding both of himself and the people around him he's very like he's very hard on himself and uh, his writers yeah. so this is an intimate portrait of very Conan. very and I think it's there's a Conan that I don't think any of us knew and I think you know Conan's a guy who's been on TV for free for the long time for the longest time now he's asking people to pay him to see him in person and uh, I don't know, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with the actual show he put on, but he didn't just come out and do comedy. It's funny, but he, there's also music and performance. It's like a really, it's like a variety show. He put yeah. on real production. And so you just see, like, how that's draining. And it's just interesting about, you know, like, I don't know, tying it back to the trip a little bit, it's also kind of the nature of fame. Like, on the one hand, like, he's a guy who clearly needs the adulation of strangers. But at the other time, that can be exhausting, just trying to, you know, signing all the autographs and giving everybody, like, all the time that they need. And just, you know, the things that when you're kind of a celebrity like that that you get roped into and promised into doing, you know, but, you know, he's just got this insane work ethic. I mean, he's from Brookline. There's definitely, he's got that New England kind of work ethic in him. Yeah. He just goes out there and he's just not going to stop until, you know, he's, you know, entertained everybody. So, And it's great because as a fan, when all this shit hit the fan about him, he was never, even the 60 Minutes interview, you know, he was very selective about yeah. what, very careful about what he said. He didn't want it, he couldn't offend anyone, he couldn't talk about it, you know, until the legal situations yeah. all got put to bed. So this is a chance to to see it, to yeah. see what he was thinking, what he went through, and and like you um, said, not not made by a studio, just like a yeah. raw, you know, real. Yeah, it's feeling. definitely not a hagiography. Like he, de there's definitely times when Conan comes off as a jerk, and. And that's surprise, but it's also kind of awesome. Like I think it's yeah. great to see a movie where you're like, all right, like he didn't say no, don't show this, only show me being awesome. Like, you know, and he's definitely awesome in it too. I think like it gives, it makes him more of a rounded person because you know, although he's someone who's used to performing and clearly he knows the camera is on, right? But there's times when he, you know, clearly acts in a way that he probably wouldn't had he really thought about it but the fact that he could have said no cut that out of the film and he didn't I think also speaks volumes about yeah. him yeah. and this is great it's coming to Conan's hometown yes at the Coolidge yeah, it's and what it's also awesome is that it's a benefit for the cardi this particular screening yes. is a benefit for the cardiology uh, cardiology clinical research fund at Boston Children's Hospital yeah that's true that's uh, a cause close to Conan's heart and you know that's one of the things he said you know we really want to play in the film but it's my hometown I want to do more than just show my movie and I think mm -hmm. that's I think that you know I think that speaks volumes about Conan too he's a very generous guy yeah you know if you can't get him on video maybe you can do a cell phone call there's a lot we're trying to obviously you know Wednesday he's shooting um, you know we tried to get him to cancel the show but that <laughs> that was tricky um, but yeah we're, we're working on um, a bunch of different things to kind of get as much of Conan into the theater as we can so there could be a, a Conan surprise we're, we're working on a Conan surprise we'll all, we'll all put our hair that way that night yeah <laughs> What's the best way? Now we've we spent an hour or so talking about all this. We didn't talk about the parties. There's still parties. Oh yeah, there are parties. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. I was, I'm sorry. We can save Tina, but I want to know. You know, I, 
besides listening to this, how do people, if the website, that kind of information right, where people right. can find out all about yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I think the best place to go is the website, ifffboston.org. And um, we have this great system called Festival Genius um, that you can read about the films, you can look at the pictures, you can view trailers, you can save things to a calendar, you know, it can kind of reconcile your calendar. If you've got two films playing against each other, it can say, hey, you know, you can't see both these films, but this film plays at another time, so you right. can see it that time. Which so, is quite often a problem. Yeah, which is, you know, maybe this company called Slated came up with this product, and we're we're totally behind it. It's I, If you've been to a film festival, all, that's the most difficult part of figuring out how you do all the work, and this does all the work for you. Well, it's literally say, magic. Yeah, it is. It is. I am, I am computer not friendly. Okay. And so when I use this program, it works so well yeah. for me. Just like, because it'll come up and say, hey, you want to think of, you know, like you said, different times, yeah. or just, yeah. because once you're in festival mode, and you, you, you know, you might want to see movies, and you realize you've got a half hour to get from the Somerville to the Coolidge. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, you can yeah. do it, maybe you can't, but um, it is a very user-friendly yeah, uh, um, tool. Yeah, and this year, it also comes as an iPhone app, so we have our own iPhone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and what's cool about that is whatever you do on the phone and whatever you do on the web can talk to each other, so you can plan all your stuff in your computer and then have it with your phone. So if you, as sometimes happens during a festival, you forget what day it is, you forget where you're going. <laughs> Brian, you Brian, there. I want to say I love those talks you do, those announcements before the films, because it's, I wish that we had that kind of announcement before some of the press screenings we go to or before some of the, uh, you know, the promo screenings, just to get people to turn their phones <laughs> off. Yeah. This like, during the movie. You yeah, know, we're... Yeah, I think, yeah, that's become an issue. Yeah, so if you do have the iPhone app, don't have it during the film. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any way you can really impress on, turn off all electronics. We man, we try our best, huge. and I got to give a shout out to the Somerville Theater, which has a year-round policy against that. They're very, you know, they have a big belief that you should be focused on the big screen, not the small screen. Right. So right. Um, we work with them to uh, police that. So hopefully it won't have to happen that anybody gets thrown out, but they are willing to throw. Does that happen? Out. They will. They have done it, not during yeah. our festival. But during right. the year, they're very. People who do it during the festival just disappear. <laughs> That's it. They, they just disappear. They should. It's important to be respectful. I wish certain people the during the promo screens would just freaking disappear. You know? And before we get to the parties, um, you have obviously sponsors. Yes. Anyone you want to give a shout out to? I mean, they're all listed on the back I here. I want to thank all of our sponsors, really. I mean, we're our big sponsor, they're JetBlue, the Phoenix Stuff Magazine, Liberty Hotel, Rural Boston Camera. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of sponsors, large and small, that give money, give items, and you know, definitely go to our site, ifboston.org, and click on those. Um, Video those Underground, things. Hollywood Express. Video nice. Underground, Hollywood Express. We are supporting the, the last. The last Hollywood Express. Yeah, no, which is great, but I mean, you know, pray the, for them. The, I mean, that's a great. I mean, the number of film. I mean, at that Hollywood Express and Porter, when I used to live down there, the number of filmmakers I discovered. Like that's where I discovered uh, Takeshi Kitano, who's probably my favorite filmmaker out there. So I mean, I think, you know, the festival's a great thing. It's 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 a week of the year plus some things during the year. But yeah, like video stores are still awesome. This and is you, cool. You've got Panavision on there. Yes, Panavision is um, uh, providing a package for um, our uh, uh, the grand jury prize. Oh, that's right. filmmaker. Not uh, only do I love their cameras, I love their t-shirts. Best damn t-shirts. I don't see if we can hook it with a shirt. <laughs> well, that's, that's one of the great, again, um, a lot of festivals, they, all they see is the thing on the back, you know, sponsored by, but there's always the little movies they do, like the uh, introductory movies or the commercials they play. Yeah, those yeah, are, yeah. But they're also, they provide gifts because there's a lot of giveaways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, so, uh, there's so, what What's Panavision providing? Um, yeah. I forget what the specifics are. It's like a sixty. The camera, the yeah, package. It's, yeah, it's like a sixty thousand dollar value, and whoever wins the grand jury prize will get access to that. Um, we've got an editing award named after the late Karen Schmier, and uh, that's uh, Avid is uh, sponsoring that. So I mean, yeah, we've got a lot of great sponsors that are giving back to the filmmaking community too. And, and we you have, search out the Uts people. Yes, yeah, so we got. <laughs> we have chips from Uts. Great chips. Of course, we've got tea from Honest. We've got uh, nuts from Q's Nuts this year. Local 
Somerville based. So I mean, we work with like local groups and we work with national groups to just give stuff to the filmmakers, give stuff to the people coming. We've got you know giveaways from Harmonix and Tech Superpowers is here. I just remember being in line for something, and one of the volunteers came by with a, a basket of chips and was passing them out to people. And it was yeah, like, this is really this great. Is a, this is yeah. a god. That, you know? that is like at the right moment, it's a great thing. Yes, yeah, it's that little. It otherwise, I, I don't care about sponsors. But again, <laughs> it's that community feeling yeah. about the festival. These people not only just write a check when they can or whatever; they actually become part of yeah. of the event. So give them a shout out. Yeah, definitely. Now, Steve, you're all about the parties. Well, kind of. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can do the, all the parties. You know, and the really, things. what it is, it's just she, the opportunity to talk to other filmmakers and meet and meet people. You know, they're interested in the same things that you're interested in. You know, it's like a uh, summit of cine, cinephiles in a way. And again, I mean, I think that's one of the things. Like we hear from filmmakers all the time. I mean, we have numerous filmmakers say, like, this is the first audience that I felt really understood my film, and they love coming to Boston. We get people. We even have alumni filmmakers, even if they don't have a film, they're like, hey, you know, I'm thinking of coming up to Boston for a few days. I just want to hang out and see other films and yeah. be with filmmakers. I think it's just a great opportunity that they just love, you know, being it because it's not a schmoozy kind of can or or Sundance where people feel like, oh my god, I got to market everything. They're like, I just want to see right. real people and see how they react to my film. Yeah, and you know the the, the parties and, and the hanging out with the filmmakers. It really does lead to. I mean, I, I've got friends today. Yeah, yeah. Know, that I met at these parties that made some terrific films. And I think that's what I mean. I think you know, like with the rise of the internet and digital distribution, I think there's a lot of great stuff that you know you can get your film out there, but then you don't necessarily get the feedback from that. So a lot of filmmakers, you know, like you know, this is this is my theatrical run. I'm going to go play at festivals. I'm going to meet with people, and then I'm going to be on DVD or on demand or whatever. So it's just a great opportunity for both sides to see, like, what you know, what does a real audience think about this film? Like outside of you know, a handful of my friends. And you, the audience plays a part in that too, because after every screening, you get that little ticket. Audience, the know? audience award is very yeah. coveted. And the award party is on the. Uh, Sunday night at the Liberty Hotel, right? Um, where we announce. So the uh, uh, audience award doesn't get announced until after the festival, obviously. But that's when we're going to be announcing the special during the grand jury prize. See who gets prizes from JetBlue and Avid and Panavision. And then again, I, I, it's just it's that community feeling again. I can't stress that enough. Is that when I see something, I I've, I've got my slip of paper and I'm ripping yeah, yeah. a five or I'm ripping a one or and there's yeah. people there with a bucket and I. I pay attention. I wait for the audience vote and see how close I get. It's just, you never know. Brian, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, well, the festival's going through its ninth year, and I've been doing it since its second year. So, eight years. You know, I think it's neat that you also get to see how filmmakers' careers have grown. Yeah. You know, with their first films in the fest, and they come back with a few others, and, and some of them go on to even greater success. Yeah, know, I mean, if you... Studios. Yeah, I mean, um... Yeah, uh, Annabelle and Ron Flack are people. We had a bunch of their short films. We opened up 2006 with Pat Nelson. They've gone on to do studio films. Uh, we had Lena Dunham last year with um, uh, Tiny Furniture, and she's now working with Judd Apatow on um, a project. And Alex Karpovsky is going to be acting in that on um, the HBO thing. And he, we've had him for you know um, uh, the whole story. And most of this is all made up. Lynn Shelton. Yes, Lynn Shelton. Big success there. Uh, we had Deborah Granick last year with Winter's Bone, and then she went on to, you know, be nominated for an Oscar and whatnot. So, I mean, I think, you know, it's a great way to meet people. We had Michael, Michael Sarah before he was Michael Sarah. We had Jesse Eisenberg before he was Jesse Eisenberg. Right. So, I mean, right. you know, it's a great way to meet people who may then go on to be bigger. But I think it's just a great way to follow a career of, like, the people who year in, year out come back with a film. Like, um, Ashley Saban and David Redman, who, you know, been with Mardi Gras Made in China and an Invisible Girlfriend. Like, they come back year after year. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, I think it's just great to come see these filmmakers and see how they change the other way. And then they meet each other. I mean, they'll, right. you know, they'll kind of, you know, come up with an idea and 
you know, as they go from festival to festival, and they're like, oh, well, we were just in Atlanta with these guys, and we came up with an idea, so, you know, we're going to shoot some stuff in Boston this week, and I it's think even, that's It's like too. how people even get film crews sometimes. Yeah, or absolutely. Or producers that they're eventually going to work with. It's like, you know, you, you, you see, even apart from the parties, there's other stuff that goes on, you know, just meeting people. And yeah, you, I mean, up, you don't... These great memories yeah. are created. Yeah, you, know? you absolutely don't have to, you know, because the, you know, you don't have to buy the pass that gets you in the parties to meet filmmakers. Like, it's right. not, we're not exclusive like that. You definitely can hang out with filmmakers wherever in the lobby. And especially, like, Davis Square is such, like, a great area for, like, hanging out. Like, there's definitely, um, definitely just people hang out in the park there eating burrito or whatever. And you can be like, hey, I saw your film. I'd love to talk to you. Or We did a lot of interviews like that yeah. last year. Uh, the woman who did Beijing Taxi. Yeah. And yep. you know, we talked to her yeah. across the street. Mel Wang. And, uh, you know, and, and the great thing for us being members of the press is we make these contacts ourselves. And then she was sending an email saying, hey, the film's coming to Boston. Yeah. You know, and just updates on their career, they keep in touch with us. So it's always a good thing. Yeah, I think it's a great way for people to kind of get in on the ground for filmmakers and just films. And it's like kind of a, yet, yeah, you know, bragging rights aside, I think it's like a great opportunity when the films actually come out later in the year. If they do, like, oh, we're going to play for a week at the Kendall. Like, it's a great way for you to say to people, you know, who you work with or go to school with, like, hey, I saw this movie back at the festival. It's really amazing. You got to see this thing. I mean, I think that's like really what drives us because, you know, the people who work here around on the festival are also volunteer. None of us get paid for this. Right. So, um, and so uh, we often wonder, well, why do we do this? And one of the reasons is, you know, when you find a great movie like Tiny Furniture or Marwin Call, which, you know, was a great Terrific. documentary from last year, like, you know, and, and I know you guys know this, like, when you see a movie, you're like, I want to tell everybody about this great movie. Right. And it's just like, you know, if we're at South By or Sundance or we get a submission, we're like, I've, you know, there's this short that we're playing this year called The Dentist about this dentist who has uh, a really exciting secret um it's uh well i don't want to give it away but it's like it's just a, this fun fascinating like, wow i never would have expected that and it's you know eight minutes and it's just awesome and it's like a guy that you think about from time to time like oh yeah there's the you know and i think it's just like a great opportunity to be like i want everyone to, to meet this guy yeah uh, this shouldn't just be my experience i want the whole city to know about this guy so i think it's a great opportunity for the people who come that then say like oh my god i saw this movie last night about this dentist like yeah. you gotta go see this thing it's this guy's awesome yeah, and remember the director's name because directors, you know, it's like having your acting reel or your yeah, yeah, resume. Yeah. You know, I send out clips when I'm looking for work. These guys make short movies. Yeah, yeah. Every every director started with short someplace, yep. and so you go to a night and you see five movies. You might be seeing the next whoever. Yeah. You know, with their and, su and surprises. You get some major actors turning up in some of these oh, shorts. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, for it's, and it's, it goes back to the reason we're talking about this. It's the love of film. Whether yeah. it's an actor who's doing a short to help a young filmmaker. Um, or you know, just anything you know, the, yeah. the people in the audience. So. What people got to do is they got to check it out online. It's iffboston.org. Yes, iffboston.org. Independent Film Festival Boston. We're the Somerville, the Brattle, the Stewart Street, the Coolidge. Stewart Street this year. Stewart Street this year. Very cool. We're very excited. I love the um, theater. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Bringing bringing the movies to downtown Boston again, which is exciting. So yeah, come check us out. We good? We good. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Thanks guys. for joining us. Thanks, you can listen to all of our episodes online. We're at post-movie.net, and we're also on Facebook. So just enter post-movie, and Facebook should come up if you want to like us. And liking us would be cool. And we're also on iTunes if you want to leave an iTunes review. Uh, I haven't checked lately, so I'm hoping that there's something there. If anybody wants to leave a positive review, negative that'd be review. good. Or a negative review, but positive. I know my better. audience. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any questions, send us an email. We're at contact at post-movie.net. So until next week, I'm Steve Head. I'm John Black. So long, everyone.